Uh, one guy you mentioned in your um, in your uh, in your pod, all in your uh, BSJ article, also Sherrod was uh, Romeo, who again, <laughs> call, call me Romeo? crazy. Romeo, who? I'm John, still, we're there. Zanis, we're there I'm with Romeo. I'm still bullish on Romeo, but the the quote from the executive that you that you talked to an East executive was. There might be a team out there that values him, and and the executive said that um, he's still got big upside. Okay, and I that's what that's again I'm telling you. where I'm staying on this, and I and I, you know I get beat up a little on it, but this is a guy who was a top three high school recruit entering college, didn't have a great college season, which is why he slipped to 14 plus his injury. Um, and he has a great pedigree and an ability to score and do a lot of things that impressed a lot of people, granted not at this level uh, and not even really at the college level, but there's a lot of things that he could do and a lot of things this team needs that he can do. So I am still holding out hope that Romeo, if he's not a, and again, I hate the idea of trading him before he goes out there and plays 15 minutes for you. I think that that's just bad business because it's selling him at an all-time low. I'm, I'm counting on an actual contribution from him. Well, here's the thing. He had that stretch last season where it was like three or four games. It wasn't a long stretch, but three or four games where he looked really good. And it wasn't so much his scoring. It was his defense. Uh, that's the part of his exactly. game that I was told, again, last year, because I, I got a text from, from executive. was just like, Romeo? Defense? Then it was just like, WTF? Question mark, question mark. We never saw that from him in high school because he was so good offensively. We never saw that at Indiana because it, he was actually playing with an injury most of his, his one season at Indiana. Uh, that's why, you know, it made sense for him to, to turn pro when he did because you don't want that to be something that becomes part of your narrative, which, as it turned out, it is exactly that part of his narrative. Romeo's a good player when he's healthy, but that's the big if. Can he stay healthy long enough to help you? But look, to me, if it means getting an elite rotation guy that has some upside that's in their low to mid 20s age wise, and I got to give up Romeo, I'll probably do it. But if you're talking about getting someone who's at the end of the rope, who's like 34, 35 years old, is, you know, once they're done with us, they're done with the league, hell no. Not so that's no. I, I hate the ultimate him. sell low. I hate right. him as a throw in. Hate him. Right. Because you know it's going to come back and bite Danny in the ass. You know. I hate it. It feels like, <laughs> right, it feels like a Bagwell for Larry Anderson situation. You know, like, it, it feels like uh, way too much of a sell low um, where, yeah, you might get something, but this would be the classic Band-Aid. You get somebody who helps a little, you know, uh, and you give away something that has a much, much, much higher upside. I, I, that would, I, I can't see that. He has to be a sweetener or a central piece in a, in a better deal or else you're really, really just giving him away for nothing. Mm. Yeah. No, hundred percent. I mean, th that's why it's so frustrating though. Like waiting for this guy to get on the court again, another player where you want to see what they have and what do they have in this player? What's, what is it? Same Neesmith, you know, Romeo, Rob, poor, up until poor like two, two months ago. I mean, they, they've got all these young guys in their team that nobody knows what the hell they're capable of. Yeah. Neesmith. Hey, Wasn't it sad seeing him right? check in late with you standing <laughs> next to Taco? And I was like, oh, five <laughs> games ago you were playing, buddy. What happened? Hey, what Taco, happened? Taco Welcome hit him the with NBA. the three. Yeah. Yeah, Sherrod, what's your take on, on Neesmith, the whole Neesmith situation, actually? You know what? I I, I think that he's kind of like Rob. And, and it's from the standpoint of he hasn't done enough to gain Brad's trust in him. And he was doing some good things when he played. But he was making some he was making some mistakes as well. And I, I think Brad's at that point now where Brad is just rolling with the guys that he trusts. You know, that I, that's why this rotation got shortened. And if you notice, the guys that were in that rotation were guys that he's been with for years. Uh, you, you look at a guy like, you know, Peyton Pritchard, who's done a lot of really good things. We're starting to see him in and out. Uh, where he, Brad is leaning more on Teague than he is on Peyton. You see that yeah. with, we've seen that with Rob. We're seeing that with Naismith. I think eventually those guys can help them win a game or two uh, down the road, but they've got to earn <laughs> the head coach's trust. And, and I, I get it. I mean, <laughs> garbage time. <laughs>